I'm gonna um, I'm gonna prepare just a little brief thing, a little bit here tonight to prepare things for Sunday, and um, because this is gonna build upon Sunday. And um, when I was talking with Pastor Lee, and I appreciate just the gracious things he said. Uh, I don't know what guy he's talking about, but um, but I will tell you this. Um, I mean, I, I could go off on so many other things and just say the same thing likewise with him. That's why he's in some places and some meetings right now. Uh, that's why he's at, at the table right now. Um, that's why God is opening up some things for him right now. Um, and that's not just by happenstance. There's other people, and I'm sure he'd say it, it man, probably more qualified, more seasoned than I am, but, but Lee is at the table with city leaders and with pastors and strategizing right now. I don't know if you know that. Um, and that's gonna continue in the next year uh, in terms of where God wants him to go and how God wants to grow him into what God wants to do. And it has nothing absolutely to do with your resume as much as it has to do with your heart. And uh, when you have a good heart like his, you're not gonna find, listen, I know, I can, he'll tell you, I know a bazillion different pastors in the city, and he'd, he'd say, well, why me, God? Why am I sitting here with city council? Well, I'm gonna tell you why, because you have a great heart, and God's got plans, and God's trying to show you some stuff of where the ark is going. So when, when your pastor is sitting in the seat with city leaders, what is that telling you? You know, um, there is, it's letting you know and tipping you off that they're gonna know him, and they're going to know this work. And you're all in a different season. I don't know if you all know this, but, but that is going to be done by the end of this week, tonight and on Sunday. Um, so what I'm going to share with you is a prophetic word. I'm not here to, in any way, shape, or form, to live up to an expectation because those days are over for me. I'm not in the season of my life in ministry where I have to prove anything to anybody. I think at this point in my life right now, I just want to release a prophetic word. The Lord will do nothing save he will reveal it to his servants, the prophets. And so before God does a thing, I'm tipping you all off to it. Um, there are things we are in conversation about, praying about, and asking God for, because the room, why I had you walk in here, we're going to have people from all over the city, and this is where we're going to be for a prayer burn over the convoy of hope for the next year. So we may have to outgrow the space and move downstairs. That could be the case. I'm just telling you right now, you are walking around. And the reason why you were walking around wasn't because I wanted you to do the Jericho march and let the walls come down. I was wanting you to swirl and stir this threshing floor. Walk through here and let's just stir the pot um, in all of this. And the, I know the Lord just gave me this specifically for you tonight. So I'm just gonna drop this off. UPS still does deliver at 709 and so, uh, and you know how friendly they are. They ain't got time to talk to you. So they're just going to drop the bomb, and I'll uh, see you later, and I'm going to hit the truck and go. And so that's how it's going to kind of be with me tonight. We have a lot going on. I have a busy day. We have a busy day tomorrow. Um, it, we're just we're, we're in a season of acceleration, you guys. So for a long time, we felt like we were dormant, and we didn't feel like we were getting traction. Let me just tell you something. When, you, when things look like it's cutting back, or you're feeling like, okay, God, is this you, or is this a demonic attack? To bear much fruit, you gotta have the cutbacks. There's people that needed to be cut away from the ark, and I won't, I won't get more explicit than that, other than to tell you, it's not, it's like, you know, you just gotta let the Lord, he knows what he's doing when he's cutting folks out. He just knows that because wherever you're going, I don't need anybody later in the future to act goofy when I don't need you to, when it really matters. When we got really serious things that we're dealing with in the kingdom, that's not a time for people to act up and manifest in demons and attitudes and everything else when we've got a lot at stake that we're being entrusted with right now. Change is happening all over the place. We've been talking about it. We just now have the first female mayor of Des Moines and a good friend of mine texted her this morning and congratulated her. And congratulate her. Um, she was grateful. A lot of the other city council people remained the same. I'm grateful that they are pro-law enforcement, many of them, so that's a good plus. We had an opportunity to meet our superintendent about, what, two weeks ago, Convoy of Hope meeting. He came walking into a meeting. A bunch of pastors got around him. He said, pray for me. The new superintendent of school said, pray for me. And so we mobbed him, and we got around him and prayed for him, okay? Can I tell you something? That is a favor. When, I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about this remnant we're running with. And, you know, I, we, I've said this to him before. If you start thinking with your eyes, your eyes are going to fool you, Samuel, because if you think for a minute it's the pastor with the biggest budget, the mo most well-known, 
or the most well-known church, you're going to miss God. He is not going to use anything that we can polish or we can say, you know, we have done this or by our own hand we've delivered or by our own strength, our own name, our own reputation. That will not happen. Not happen here. Um, th there's going to be something extraordinary. You want to know why? Because there's no religious spirit in this house. And as you walk around, you're not feeling this like, oh, what is this? And oh, I don't, you know what I mean? That's why I had y'all do that. Because if, go find anybody on a Wednesday night. It's like, what, how kooky are they? They're all walking around uh, in a circle. What is that? You know? Um, but because I want you to, I, want, I wanted to take you through that, that motion, because I'm going to tell you, you're stirring the pot for people that will be coming on these grounds starting in the beginning of the new year. We're going to be doing and making Friday nights here. We're talking about with pastor, and this is going to be a burning bush. So there may be live worship teams. There may be people all over. Like I said, we get hot up in here, and we may be moving out of this space into another bigger space. But the fact of the matter is we're going to see the Lord move in our city, and that's what's going to happen. And, and this is not for the faint of heart. So I'm just letting you know you can't be you know, faint of heart for what God's about to do. Um, and so that's why I'm telling you this now, because there's stuff in your life right now. You wrestle with God and get through it, because you won't have time um, to, for that stuff to come up later I'm just telling you, because God's going to work on you in the next year to prepare you for a bigger entrustment and to expand what he's doing in your heart and your life so that the ark can be a part and help lead. You see what I'm saying? So what I watched in this room right now is going to be completely different in six months from now. Some of you may want to swing from places and scream and yell and be like a spiritual banshee around here because God's doing something in your life and you sense the freedom. You know, what I mean? you know what I mean? So I, I just want to give you a couple of verses. I, I, I gave them to you earlier, or I don't know if they're on the screen. I don't know what we're doing here. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop this real quick uh, because I'm not one of those pastors that have to spend 45 minutes to tell you what God's saying. Uh, I'm just not. I'm just going to tell you what God's saying and point blank. So if you're sitting there waiting for me to talk another half hour, I don't need to. I'm just going to give you the word. I'm just going to tell you what God's about to do. And on Sunday, we can do whatever we need to do. We can have extra time. I don't, you know, we can eat after. I don't care what to do <laughs> after Sunday. But I just want you to know something. I titled this Fetched, which in the King James, um, I'm reading out of the King James here. And so if, um, I, I, do we have the verse up here? Okay, I'm going to read this to you, okay? Um, and so God gave this for me for you guys out of 2 Samuel. And so let me read it to you, King James. I read all translations. Um, I just, I don't know, King James just sounds so intellectual. You know, some, some, some King James only folks, you know. Um, you know, it just sounds so regal and so royal, doesn't it, the language? And David said, well, let's, let, me, let me just pray real quick, all right? Let's just pray this real quick, all right? Because I want you to receive this and... Um, and, and so, yeah, I just, let's receive it. So, Lord, first of all, just uh, in the next few minutes, just uh, put a cold to my lips of what I say. Ecclesiastes is eight ones. Lord, we just thank you for the word of the king. There's power. And we ask you, Lord, just to say what you want to say in here, nothing less. I ask God that you just breathe this, in this into our heart. And then when we start going to bed tonight, start talking in the night watch. Give us visions and dreams. God, I'm asking that journaling start breaking out all over this congregation. We start writing stuff and scribing things. And you're talking at odd times and inconvenient times. And God, you're tugging at us to say things. You have a desire to speak. So Lord, God, give us a listening ear in the name of Jesus. So 2 Samuel chapter 9, verses 1 through 7, KGV. And the king said, there is not yet any of these with the house of, of, of Saul that I may show the kindness of God unto him. And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan hath yet a son, which is lame on his feet. And the king said unto him, where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, behold, he is in the house of Maker, the son of Amiel, in Lodabar. Then the king, then King David sent and fetched him out of the house of Maker, the son of Amiel, from Lodabar. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth. And he answered, Behold thy servant. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely shew thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake, and I will restore thee. Ooh, 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 ooh. We're standing on property right now. We're standing on property that belonged to First Federated. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. 
and I'm going to restore thee all the land of Saul thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. Okay, now I'm going to back up for a moment because you're wondering, okay, we're stepping into a narrative here, okay? And so here we see there's this character Mephibosheth that comes into the picture, right? And we're wondering, okay, um, so how did he get in the condition he was in? How did that happen? And I'm going to back up just but for a minute, and I'm going to go to 2 Samuel chapter 4, and this is what happened to him, okay, so you know. And this is why I'm addressing you tonight, because as sure as my name, there are people in here that come, have come out of drug culture, have come out of abuse, have come out of verbal abuse, physical abuse, bad marriages, bad circumstances and situations, things you don't want to talk about, things you're so glad that Jesus brought you out of. And the reason why I'm heralding this to you tonight is because to you, I want you to hear this, because that past will dog you the moment you start moving into God's purpose, all of a sudden, here it is, the past, trying to drag me back to where I was broken, where I was hurt, where are those things? The enemy just likes to play that. You know, when you get ready to go forward, be ready for him to play the backward game. And so what happened here is you see here is that um, what happens really in a nutshell in this verse is that here you have the grandson of, of Saul and... Uh, so you have both, uh, uh, Jonathan and Saul are killed in battle. And, uh, and so in that, David had a very close relationship. Now hear what I'm about to tell you. David had a real close relationship with Jonathan. Bible says their souls were knit together, okay? Um, one of the things that's going to happen, can I say this? Oh God, Jesus, let me just get real. Um, I'm just gonna say this to you. Listen to me. There are good people because there's always a skepticism when somebody comes. I appreciate what my brother just got to saying, hey, all the nice things he said, but here's the thing. It doesn't matter, all those kind of things, if my heart's not right. I understand covenant relationships. That means through thick and thin. That means we're gonna hit some speed bumps. There's gonna be some times I'm gonna make you mad, you're gonna make me mad. But I've invested so much here. We've gotta march forward and we've gotta do this. That's part of the kingdom. Can I say that? There are people that are gonna step in and have stepped into this place and have connected this place that have a wrong spirit. And so, what, and it's not covenant, it's the other way around, it's more like controlling. So I'm just gonna tell you this, be real careful who you run with and make covenant with. It's gonna be very critical in the days to come. It's people that have your back, that I don't need anything. I don't, I don't need, um, I don't have an um, ulterior motive or an agenda. Um, or some kind of thing that's going to all point back to me. This has got nothing to do with Al Perez. Al Perez can do all he wants to, but I'm going to tell you what, I'll be standing out there alone without an army, without a remnant, without friends, without co covenant brothers and sisters. That means nothing. And so I'm here to tell you, be careful and watch for wolves who move in the night. Wolves who are, who will, uh, they, they walk very carnally. Wolves are carnivorous. They're very carnivorous creatures, and they do disguise them themselves and manifest themselves. Don't think between now and what God wants to do, you're not going to have imposters, and you're not going to have people that will try to come in or attach or and on the surface will try to think they're for what the ark is doing. And I don't know why I'm veering off of this, but I'm here to tell you they're broken people, broken leaders that got some little something going on in their life that they can end up coming up here, and that little something surfaces somewhere. It's like, you, got, you can't leave. You cannot be entrusted with something big from God because you've got that nasty little something in you that's holding you back or holding you from being everything that God wants you to be. I don't care how gifted you are. You can be revelatory and still have something that will keep you from walking in destiny. That's why the heart posture has to be good. The factor, the reason why I'm talking to you about Mephibosheth is because here he is a, a, in royalty lineage as a grandson. And a nurse is a, during a time of battle, Jezreel, she's picking him up, his caretaker, and she's rushing out of there, but in the process of having somebody who he entrusted to take care of him, falls, trips, he then becomes a paraplegic in that. And you, I don't have to expound and tell you what happens to those that were lepers, disabled, or crippled, or whatever, and how they were viewed in society, and how they were ostracized. And so here he is, he's supposed to be royalty, but something happens. 
And here he's lame, the Bible says. At five years old, he had something happen, a trauma that for the rest of his life it would be with him and characterize his identity. And the problem becomes, what do you do with a dichotomy when I'm disabled, but also I'm royalty? What's wrong with this picture? Traumatized, but yet I should be, you know, I should be a king's in the household of the king of the dynasty. So here's what happens to him. When David becomes king now, because Saul and Jonathan are dead, he now has to go into exile as a cripple who really should be king. If you follow the succession, it's what he should be, but he's all over in Lodabar. He is exiled in a place which Lodabar denotes an idea meaning pastureless or a place of isolation. Because and, and, and when you have shame in your life, when you have something that, you know, I, I'll just tell you this because you see my baby girl back there. Whenever you have, when you're dealing with somebody that has special needs or whenever you see somebody that's disabled or whatever, people just have a tend to look or gawk or take a ste second stare because it's not normal. And, and there's an essence when people do that where you start to feel shame or you start to feel like, why am I not like everybody else? There's a life of regret. Whenever you have trauma, and the reason why I'm talking to you tonight about this is because God has got to do something in to renew your mind to prepare you where this place will be in a year from now. So we've got some business to do in this place where God has to renew some minds in here. This isn't a place anymore. There was a time for milk. There was a time to be carnal. There was a time where God put up with some stuff, but where he's taking you, we're going to have to have some quick growth, y'all. We're going to have to have some people growing up real fast because God has got some great things ahead for this place. I'm telling you. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't. I could be in a lot of places tonight, trust me. Okay? There are things that are being done. I don't know if you've been praying in tongues or what, but there are things that are going to happen in this place that you're like, I don't know if we verbally prayed that out or declared it, but it's happening. But God has to deal with something in your life and my life that is somewhere, something in the past or a place of brokenness because that thing just has the most inconvenient thing, um, timing, when it wants to show up when, oh, I don't need that to show up now. You know, those things can't be showing up right now because God's got great things and I'm going to blow it. Can I say this to you all in this room? You're the breakout, gen you're the breakout person in your family tree. You're the person in your family that's going to break something and break the shame. In fact, that's what the name of Phibosheth means in its etymology. It means to end shame or the end of shame. You're the one, or, or you're going to be a walking dichotomy because people will try to figure out on the outside and they'll probably think, oh, he or she's awkward or I don't figure them out, a little off. But on the inside, you got favor, you got power. You, you, God's going to utilize you. Don't let no past dog you and disqualify you. That's why I'm here to tell you tonight. Mephibosheth had that, and he ended up in Lodabar. That's certainly not a king's palace. And here, I, this is the reason why I want you to know this, because God is going to come to you where you are and come get you. And you know what's so interesting? Ziba is an interesting character. I just want to deal with him in the contemporary text where he is, because he's a little shifty later, but I want to deal about with some stuff here, because him and Mephibosheth have issues later, but where we are right now, this is what I want to hone in on. Mephibosheth uh, is in Lodabar, disabled, place of isolation. And David, who made this promise, I'm just telling you all this because there's prophecies over this house. Some of you all probably forgot them. Some of you guys probably like, oh, yeah, remember when God said over this place, over the ark? Remember when God said? You probably forgot some of those words. Well, some of those, get ready to pull them off the shelf because they're going to come back into play and where God's going to take you. He doesn't forget. When he makes a covenant to a place, he's not going to forget. And here's what's interesting. David has this strong relationship to Jonathan Covenant. And he says, and he's a type of Christ in this, this, this story, but he says, is there anyone I can show kindness to? When really in that day, to be honest, he could have really taken out his grandson too, because that's usually how it happened. Any king that came into power, it was like, you know what, get rid of all of them. So nobody comes sneaking back up on the throne over here. So get rid of him. Or get, and he didn't. Instead, he said, I'm going to show you kindness. 
Is there anyone left? Yeah, you've got one, but he's over in Lodabar. You sure you want to get him? I made a promise. Let me just say this, and I'm going to say it in tears because I have no idea what God has said over this house. But I'm going to tell you this. He's made promises to this place. Irrespective of leadership changes, irrespective of people coming and going, where you guys are about to go, I'm going to tell you tonight, without me taking a big bullhorn and blowing it as loud as I can in this room to wake every one of you up in the spirit to let you know, be ready. Because you're not going to, you're going to feel uncomfortable with the people in influence that's going to come into your building, come into your circle. And if you have the mindset of a Mephibosheth and you decided, well, you know, oh, I feel awkward. I don't think I belong here. I don't feel like I fit in. And I don't feel like. That's why Jesus said, go get, go fetch him. Ziba is an interesting character in the story because when he tells him, go fetch him. In other words, it's like, go grab him and bring him here. No, it's not, oh, would you, mother man, could, would you, could you, would, come on. No, I'm not, God ain't holding you by the hand. God isn't going to be like, oh, come on, come on, you can do this. No, go get him. This is serious. You belong here. I, and one day I'm going to take you from there and I'm going to move you right here and sit at my house with my kids at my table. That's how quickly God wants to move in the time we're in. Stuff that took years to happen is happening fast and at an accelerated pace. God does not have time for you and I to sit around and feel sorry for yourself and woe is me and woe is this and woe is that. He's talking to you. Don't, when God is getting ready to do something over a work, I'm telling, what's the date today? This is November what, 8th? Mark it down. Because after today, you're going to start seeing stuff in the next several weeks and months to come. And you're like, who are they? And what's going on in here? And what's going on, Pastor Lee? And blah, blah, blah. It's because I already told you what was ready, what was coming. I already warned you. I already gave you the tip off. You hear what I'm saying? I already let you know. So you've got business to do. And that is God is going to start renewing your mind, renewing your heart. It's going to start in the prayer furnace. It's going to start breaking up fallow ground in your heart. He's going to deal with that place of isolation. You're present here, but boy, you could be sitting right here, but you're in Lodabar spiritually and emotionally in another place. And God's going to shift that. It will happen very quickly. He's moving that fast. What's interesting in this story, y'all, because I'm going to show how good God is. God transports him. Ziba, go get him. I'm going to show kindness. It's going to be awkward because here's what he does. He falls flat on his face when he gets there, and he's like, oh, my goodness, I'm in front of the king. And so what do you think is going on through his head? He's going to kill me. He brought me here to kill me. Um, um, I shouldn't be here. What do you want to do with a dog like me? And that's not the time for you and I. Listen, this is going to blow you out. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to say this, and I'll expound more when we get, we're here on Sunday. So he goes and gets him. He says, the only way you're going to understand what was really destined for you is I'm going to have you sit with my kids at my table. Now here's the thing. Give me a... Okay, we all going to turn around here. Okay, just the 10. Okay. You and Anna are Dave, King David's kids. Okay? And I'm sitting at this table. Okay? We're all sitting at the table. On the level here, y'all, if you were to look at the top of this table like this, you can say, hey, pretty equal here when you're sitting on a table. But if you just, you see Blaine Lakes hanging. But from here up, you don't see anything different than any of the kids sitting at the table. And this is what God wants you to know. Some of you, wherever you've been in your life, and some of it's been pretty hard. I say this to this pastor because it's not just literally, but he's sitting at the table. We sat at the table, what, two weeks ago? Chief of police, mayor over here, you know, city council people, and we're sitting at a table together. But if you looked up under the table, at Pastor Lee, you had known the life he has had gone through in his life. The drugs, the, 
the stuff coming through Teen Challenge, all the hurt, all the stuff that you went through. Nobody would know, but from here up, I have a voice and a place at the table because I was invited here. That's what's going to happen to the ark, and it's going to happen fast. We don't need your personal drama showing up when we got ready for big stuff to happen. Let me step on toes because God's got big things destined for you guys. Show up like you belong there. Show up like I got invited here, so I must have something to say. And by the way, he did say something. And after he got through saying something, which he wasn't planning on saying anything, but when he said something, you got the city manager, you got Linda Westergaard, you got Chief, everybody's quiet and they're listening like, oh, oh. Because if it's starting at the top, guess where else it's trickling down to? All over this joint. It starts at the top and it filters down. You hear what I'm saying? If it's on him, it's on you. You run with him, you get it too. If you want the oil, that it's coming down on him and his wife's house, but y'all better be ready to roll with it because if it starts at the top, everybody gets it. Everybody gets the favor, everybody gets the blessing, everybody gets the, you see what I'm saying? That's why it's critical, why, I'm, can I just say this? Oh God, please edit this out. I'm just gonna say it. Be careful, can I, I'm just, I gotta go there. Please, Jesus, help me, um, muzzle me, help me to say this. Listen. I'll say this in the nicest way I can say it uh, because I, I, I got to get running, but here's what I got to tell you. There's a reason why there's leadership. There's been leadership, a leader shift over this house. Look at me. You know what I'm talking about? Because, because what God destines for someone in a place, you know why he's getting it? It's because his heart is good. He's got a good heart posture. That's why it's going to happen. Not arrogant leaders, not leaders that think they're all that, not leaders that think they deserve it, not leaders that work in control, leaders that manipulate, leaders. That, that day is over with. I'm just telling you all. That, that, you disqualified yourself real, real quick. The oil is about to flow. Or as they would like to say, you guys are going to dive into a river, you better dive in, because right now it's ankle deep. And it's going to increase. And if you don't think the spiritual warfare over this house is going to increase, you better be ready for battle. You better know how to. David was a man of war. You're going to come up under and, and to that track. You better know how to throw down with the devil and not play victim. Because where you're going, you're going to have to defend the territory and the promises over this house. Point blank. Your giftings are going to move quickly. Things are going to move quickly. I came to let you know, as of tonight and in the months to come, it's going to move radically. And, and by the way, there's going to be people coming into this house. Embrace them as part of the army, as part of the family. God's bringing them here for a reason, okay? And, and, and there's a citywide thing here. Like I said, I had a conversation today. I told you a little bit about I'm, I, We're going to talk tomorrow. I had a three-hour conversation. I, like, what in the world? God, what are you going to do? What in the world are you going to do? Blew me away. Woke up today, would have never been on my day timer. Amen? So I'm here to tell you this. God is coming to get you. And it isn't a, a little let me hold your hand and drag your feet, pout, shout, I don't want to go, and it's all about you. Won't happen. He's going to grab you and transport you into a place because once you sit at that table, you know automatically in your mind you belong there. Automatically you are, you're sitting at a place, it's like, God, I'm, I'm, in a, I'm in a place and it's taken me a minute to wrap this around my mind that even though I have lame legs under the table, I'm a king's kid, I just got adopted into this. And that's how it happens, okay? So we're gonna learn strong words like covenant, like I got you, Steve, like I got your back. That's not just words. No, nobody's going to flap off and open their mouth and put words on you without me standing there to say, uh, nah, you got to have that. Nobody's going to talk to me about leaving like, oh, uh, nope, not going to happen. You bet your bottom dollar ain't going to happen, and I'm probably the wrong person you're going to talk to with that. You see what I mean? It's that kind of thing. It's like our souls are knit for this work. And you know what happened? Tanner, all last year, God kept telling me this. And I was going through all kinds of stuff, and God kept saying this to me. And this is how, what he would say to me. It's not who you think. Well, that's not the answer I need right now. Remember I was telling you? That's not the answer I need right now. God, I'm dealing with this, this over here. It's like, 
It's not who you think. I'm like, that doesn't make sense. And every time I was going through thing after thing after thing, that's what kept coming up. It's not who you think. Now I understand what he meant by it's not who you think. I was preparing you for work, Al, to do something. And you got a, and Lee Pickerel's coming into your view. And he's going to be part of that army. It's not who you think it is. So in other words, I'm getting ready to do something crazy here. So you're going to start having people that don't fit. When you got pastors with dreads coming into the picture, like, okay, what's wrong with this? I'm telling you what, bring it all day long, bro. Because when he starts opening his mouth, they're like, oh, wow, profound. Oh, wow. Who's he? Who's that guy? Because he's deep. And so we got things to do and we got things to build, y'all. I'm telling you, listen to me. You're going to look at me a few months back like, yep, that guy was right. What, when did he say it? November 8th. Be ready for, because I'm going to now add the next layer on Sunday. I just prepared you today. It's, uh, it's recorded. It's already prophetic. I want you to be prepared for what's coming. Because now Sunday, I'm about to tell you what we're going to see as the army, how we're going to mobilize, how we're going to go forward, and we're just going to have a good time. So, amen? Yes. All right, I'm going to pray. And uh, stand with me for a minute. I'm going to pray because I, I got a roll. And uh, we got quizzes tomorrow with youngins and we got to go over stuff so uh yeah so um okay guys are you ready for this are you ready for this ride okay let me tell you something i'm all for special speakers but special speakers once they go it's just lee me and some other folks that are going to make it go down love special speakers coming in i do but special speakers don't have the strategy for my city Right? So once you go, appreciate it, got encouraged, could have watched you on YouTube, but I need to grab you, touch you, like, hey, bro, cry with me, run with me, pray with me. Amen? Right? Amen, right? Aiden's looking back. Yeah, right? Aiden? Yep. That's the next generation right there, Aiden, to break, to break that barrier. Dad, see, listen to me. All the dad's moms in this room, Take that lid off for, of your kids. Take the, those generation curses. The devil is a liar. He just wants to fight you, your family, your kids. I don't care how old you are. You just hold your ground like, no, you don't, devil. Oh, no, you hadn't seen anybody like me. I'm going to stand. I'm going to hold my ground. I'm going to stay right here. No, no, you're not. You're not taking out my kids. You're not lying to my kids. You won't have them. You're not going to lie to them. You're not going to touch them. Draw bloodlines all around your stuff and start getting serious about your warfare. Start getting serious about what God wants to do. God, start getting serious about this battle. Because it's all about you. You know what happens, bro? You know, when I brought you into those things, I'm sitting up there thinking, man, what's going on in Lee's head right now at this table, analyzing this room? And it's to simply say this, guys, where you're about to be and what you are about to do, some of your ministries and some of the things that God's going to do is going to go outside this building, and it will be for everybody. And be ready for this entire building for God to start doing things over this space. Wait, just, I'm just going to tell you. All I'm going to say, I'm going to shut my mouth because I'll, I'll spill beans, but I'm just going to tell you stuff is working. Stuff's going on. So can we pray for that? Amen? All right, let's pray. Father, first of all, tonight, just thank you for what you're doing. You're moving. You're doing things incredibly fast. God, we're trying to catch up. Give us spiritual stamina right now to keep up with you. You're on a move. You're moving, God, so quickly. And so we're asking God in this time, you're grabbing us out of places, God, where we were, where we were broken, where we were having mental gymnastics with the enemy, putting lies in our head and saying things and having us believe something and isolating us, God, from people coming to church, but isolated. We're, we're here, but we're not here. God, I'm asking you right now to bring a deliverance to this house, a freedom to this house, break off religious fetters, break off past spiritual disappointment and hurt uh, pessimism God right now people that are pessimistic God if we're gonna go into Canaan and apprehend it God I'm asking right now those that have been prepared for it let's go let's go into the Valley of Giants let's go into the land of the Amalites and Anakites and Parasites and God we're just asking right now let's go into a place God to apprehend it as a people we confound the enemy because we've been people that have been broken at one point in our life, but we refuse to stay in Lodabar. And so God, I'm asking right now how you're quickly moving. You took Joseph out of a prison and moved him up into Pharaoh's palace. Instantaneously, God, do it quickly. Fast moving. 
and the days are evil. God, in this time that you're moving fast, would you also restore the years? There was a powerful word that David said to him. Not, I'm going to kill you. Not, the, not anything to harm Mephibosheth, Mephibosheth, but he said, you know what I'm going to do? <laughs> this is how good I am. I'm going to start restoring things back to you. So God, would you restore the years the canker worm, the palmer worm have eaten? Would you restore back to people that felt like they lost years in their, of stuff in this place? They lost uh, years in the drug culture. They lost years, God, in bad relationships and situations uh, in other places of hurt, God, dysfunction. They restore back to them, God. As David said to Mephibosheth, I'm going to restore lands and things that belonged that belong to you because you're of a godly lineage. Make it happen in this place. In Jesus' name, amen? Amen. I got a jet. I love you all. Part two on Sunday. Let's do it. Amen. Love you all.